Hello everybody and I am Meghna and I am here interviewing my most favorite favorite speaker of today's session. I am here with Mr. Brian King and let me welcome him. Welcome sir. Hi there. Happy to be here. I'm really really delighted and I, and I really appreciate that you have taken so much of time from this busy conference talking to me. Uh, I really have very few questions to ask you uh, because those are a specific set of questions that I have taken out to ask you. Uh, quickly going on to the questions. Number one, this uh, is about the CGIAR's emergent focus on digital and the role it plays on research and agriculture. Mm -hmm. Well, I have gone through the agenda. It says the session will showcase findings on focus groups and trends. So this data that has been uh, taken from focus groups, how relevant is it when you take it on on the Eastern note or when you take it, uh, when you take India into consideration? How relevant is it mm -hmm. when you take India into consideration? Mm -hmm. The focus groups are with um, the, 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 the digital strategy focus groups that we're doing are primarily built around technical uh, disciplines and so there are and there there are focus groups taken from a particular technical discipline that cuts across the whole of of uh, of CGIR and as you know we're a global um, consortium and so there are uh, communities of practice uh, several of which are participating in the convention that are kind of more technical communities of practice so the crop modeling and socioeconomic data and ontologies and so forth and then there are kind of more functional disciplines as well. Um, that are communities of practice. And so these, these focus groups have been primarily internal to CGIR, but through a technical lens. And we try to be as cross-cutting um, across centers and geographies and, and uh, points of view and gender and you know, a, a diversity of view in these focus groups. Um, and so our, um, you know, our hope is certainly that they'll, 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 they'll be relevant to India, but it's, it's through the lens of these technical disciplines or these functional disciplines like um, communications or monitoring and evaluation and learning or crop modeling or what have you. So our hope is that they'll be um, uh, broadly applicable and, 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 and certainly localizable as well. Absolutely. Uh, well, I, I also had another question in mind. Well, uh, th there are youth across the globe. I mean, there is youth across the globe uh, a part of you um, who might have access to farming and who are interested and a part of you who are kind of interested in farming but might not have access to any tools since either they're living in an urban platform or, uh, mm -hmm. or you know, no access to the land which they're supposed to have. So uh, for that youth, how do you think the small steps they, they take should, you know, should become a great uh, leap towards farming or leap towards the environment. Mm -hmm. What are the small mm -hmm. steps that that general youth can take so that even if they are not farming, how, uh, they are still con contributing to the greenery or the environment? Mm -hmm. So I think in terms of getting involved with farming, I mean, if you don't have access to land um, uh, or other or other resources to be able to get involved with farming, one thing that you, I mean, if you really like something, you will find ways to build exposure to it. And so you could actually go and um, meet, uh, you know, others who do have those things and, and engage with them and see what talents, um, what talents you can bring. In terms of opportunities in the bigger food system, it's not just on farm that we're talking about, we're talking about all of the linkages throughout a food system. And so um, if you, I mean, if you really want to be engaged on farm, that's, that's great. Um, if you want to be engaged with the food system, the opportunities are almost endless um, because we all participate in it. And so um, in that case, you might uh, start with a particular aspect of it that, that's, that's interesting to you. I mean, there are uh, startups out there that just connect small urban shops with small producers. You know, there's, there are a number of agricultural advisory startups out there. There are um, these great ideas of the type that we saw during the Inspire Challenge pitches 
that really intersect with it anywhere in the food system. And so if it's something that, that appeals to you, then um, um, you, know, you can start to seek out some of the, some of the, the ways to engage with those really interesting um, innovative you know, um, ideas that are starting to come out. And, and so I guess you'd have to seek out, seek out those ideas in the context wherever you are and those, those actors in the context where you are. If you're not going to start one yourself, of course, which you yes. could do, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Thank you for that answer. Because uh, people like me, people who have, uh, you know, a little bit of idea about what they have to do, but then they do not have exact direction of where they should go, will definitely relate mm -hmm. to this answer. So, mm -hmm. and I have just one last question to you. Uh, the question is about the big data platforms that have been conducted through all these years starting from mm -hmm. 2018, 19, and then I've been part of Youth in Data 2019 and this year too. And okay. I have seen such a big raise only in the, uh, not only in the, uh, you know, spectrum of Youth in Data, but also during Inspire Challenges and also uh, the speakers. So mm -hmm. being in the business for only about two years, I have seen so much of uh, change and so much of uh, increase in graph. You have been there for like, I don't know, so long. So how, how, how much of change have you seen? And where is this change going? Is, is it going towards the positive side or is it, is it stagnant or where is it? Hmm. Well, I think the, um, let me organize my thought here a little bit about this. So uh, digital agriculture as a, as a thing, you know, as a, as a, as a discipline, as a movement or what have you, um, has been growing over all of that time. And, and there are some real kind of key things that I think are kind of holding it back, you know, so um, access to the data, access to the analytic services that can be, you can see they can very deeply technical and they can be very complex. And um, what we need to be able to do is sort of manage all of that and, and, and make actionable insights and actionable um, solutions. And so, um, you know, I think that research actors like CGIR have, um, um, you know, a really important role to play in kind of facilitating that we get as many solutions as we need for the as many problems as we have related to, to global food security. Um, in terms of the last few years and the big data platform as a as a program, um, we've been doing we're uh, we're in our fourth year. We've done three um, previous big data conventions. This is the fourth. And um, I've seen just in that time, I've seen um, this real uh, kind of flourishing of, of, of innovative ideas um, that intersect across the food system um, in different ways. I've seen really dramatic growth in machine learning and artificial intelligence um, ideas sort of coming to the fore. So I think there's a really rapid kind of maturation happening with, with um, you know, ML, AI, um, solutions. I think that um, the at least in terms of the the innovations that we've had a hand in trying to encourage or foster, we've seen um, sort of much better targeting um, of of small farmers and small producers and small businesses, um, and much more engagement with um, external kind of product and service developer type. Type partners. We're, we're researchers, that's not usually our strong point. Um, and I'm, I'm really happy to see those kinds of partnerships happening now where, um, you know, the, the kinds of analysis or insight that can come from research don't uh, only end up in a peer reviewed paper, they also end up in a really meaningful solution or service or something like that. So I think there is a kind of flourishing happening in our little window into this, this vast uh, digital agriculture space. That was, that was so enlightening. And I'm really, really looking forward to attending all the conventions that will ever happen under CGIAR. Thank you so much for taking out time and thank you so much for answering all these questions with so much patience. And- uh, My pleasure, Megana. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. My pleasure. Hmm?